Chapter 9. Ga. E. O. When in the sanctum sanctorum of the temple of Solomon the high priest chanted the formidable mantra E. A. A. The temple drums resounded in order to prevent the profane from hearing the sublime E. A. A. The great master Hirakocha stated the following in the Gnostic Church. Diodorus said, Know that among all gods the highest is E. A. A. Hades is in the winter, Zeus begins in spring, Helios in the summer, and in autumn E. A. A. enters into activity again, working constantly. E. A. O is Jovi's pater, Jupiter, whom the Jews unjustly call Jave. E. A. O offers the substantial wine of life, while Jupiter is a servant of the sun. E. Ignis, fire, soul. A. Agua, water, substance. O. Origo, cause, air, origin. Hirakocha says E. A. O is the name of God among the Gnostics. The divine spirit is symbolized by the vowel O, which is the eternal circle. The letter I symbolizes the internal being of each human being but both are intermingled with the letter A, as a point of support. This is the powerful mantra or magic word we must chant when practicing sexual magic with the priestess wife. The sound of the three powerful vowels must be prolonged like this, ye a a o that is to say, extending the sound of each vowel. After having inhaled to fill the lungs, the air is then exhaled. One inhales, counting to twenty, holds the air, counting to twenty, and exhales vocalizing the letter I. Each exhalation is for a count of twenty. Repeat the same for the letter A, then continue with the letter O. This is done seven times. Afterward, continue with the powerful archaic mantras, Kalakal, Salasal, Zizer. Kalakal makes the human spirit vibrate. Salasal vibrates the earthly human personality. Zizar makes the astral body of the human being vibrate. These are very ancient mantras. The divine savior of the world chanted the powerful sacred mantra of fire along with his priestess when practicing with her in the pyramid of Kephren. That is Enri, the lord of all adoration practiced in Egypt with his Isis. He combined this mantra with the five vowels E, E, O, U, A, Enri, Enre, Onro, Unru, Anra. The first is for clairvoyance. The second is for the magic ear. The third is for the heart chakra, the center of intuition. The fourth is for the solar plexus or the telepathic center. The fifth is for the pulmonary chakras. These grant the power to remember past reincarnations. The mantra in Re and its four derivatives applicable to the chakras are vocalized by dividing them into two syllables and then pronouncing the sound of each of their four magic letters. With these mantras we carry the sexual fire to the chakras during the practices of sexual magic. Returning now to the E, A, O, which, as we have already stated, is the name of God among the Gnostics, we will add the following. The vowel E makes the pineal gland, and the embryo of soul that every human being has incarnated, vibrate. The vowel A puts the physical vehicle into vibration, and the formidable O makes the testicles vibrate, marvelously transmuting the seminal liquor, until it is converted into Christic energy that victoriously ascends up to the chalice, brain. The Gospel of St. John begins praising the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. John 1 verses 1 to 5. The word John can be broken down into five vowels thus, E, E, O. U, A, E, E, O, U, I, N, John. The entire Gospel of John is the Gospel of the Word. There are people who want to separate the Divine Word from sexual magic. That is absurd. No one can incarnate the Word by excluding sexual magic. Jesus, who is the incarnation of the Word itself. Jesus, who is the Word itself made flesh, taught sexual magic precisely through the Gospel of St. John itself. It is necessary to now study chapter 3 of the Gospel of St. John, from verse 1 to 20. Let's see, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do, unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
John 3 verses 1 to 3. Here, dear reader, is a sexual problem. To be born has been, and will always be, a sexual problem. No one can be born from theories. We have never met a person born from some theory or hypothesis. To be born is not a question of beliefs. If we could be born simply by believing in the Gospels, why haven't all students of the Bible been born? Being born is not a matter of believing or not believing. No child is born from beliefs. They are born through the sexual act. This is a sexual matter. Nicodemus was unaware of the great arcanum and responded in ignorance, saying, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. John 3 verses 4 to 5 It is necessary for you, reader, to know that the water of the gospel is the semen itself, and the Spirit is the fire. The Son of Man is born from the water and fire. This is absolutely sexual. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. John 3 verses 6 to 7. It is necessary that the Master be born within us. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. John 3 verse 8. Indeed, the one who is born of the Spirit shines for a moment, and later disappears among the multitudes. The multitudes cannot see the Superman. The Superman becomes invisible for the multitudes. Just as the chrysalis cannot see the butterfly when it has flown, likewise the common man loses sight of the Superman. Nicodemus did not understand any of this. Thus, responding, he said, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and do not know these things? John 3 verses 9 to 10. Indeed, Nicodemus knew the sacred scriptures because he was a rabbi, but he did not know sexual magic because Nicodemus was not an initiate. Jesus continued saying, Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. John 3 verse 11. Jesus gave testimony of what he knew, of what he had seen, and of what he had experienced for himself. Jesus practiced sexual magic with a vestal of the pyramid of Kephron. Thus, he was born. This is how he prepared himself in order to incarnate the Christ. Thus, he was able to incarnate the Christ in the Jordan. We all know that after leaving Egypt, Jesus traveled through India, Tibet, Persia, etc., and after returning to the Holy Land, he received the Venustic initiation in the Jordan. When John baptized Master Jesus, the Christ entered the soul of the Master. The Christ was humanized. Jesus was divinized. The outcome of this divine and human mixture is that which is called the Son of Man, the Superman. If Jesus had not practiced sexual magic in Egypt, he would not have been able to incarnate the Christ. He would have been a great master but not the living model of the Superman. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? John 3 verse 12 with this, the great master corroborates that he is talking about earthly things, about the practice of sexual magic. Without this, one cannot be born. If people do not believe in earthly things, how can they believe in the heavenly ones? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. John 3 verse 13 The eye cannot ascend to heaven because it did not descend from heaven. The eye is Satan and must inevitably be dissolved. That is the law. Speaking about the sacred serpent, the great master said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. John 3 verse 14 We must lift up the serpent upon the staff as Moses did in the wilderness. This is a matter of sexual magic because the Kundalini only rises with sexual magic. Only thus can we lift up the Son of Man, the Superman within ourselves. It is necessary for the Son of Man to be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3 verse 15. The rational homunculus, mistakenly called man, still does not have the authentic astral, mental, and causal vehicles. Really, it's only just a phantom. It is necessary to practice sexual magic in order to live the path of perfect matrimony, in order to engender the Christ astral, Christ mind, and Christ causal. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3 verses 16 to 18. We affirm that true faith and belief is shown with actions. Anyone who does not believe in sexual magic cannot be born even though he says, I believe in the Son of God. Faith without deeds is dead. Anyone who does not believe in the sexual magic taught by Jesus to Nicodemus does not believe in the Son of God. Those people are lost. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, hates sexual magic, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed, impugned. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. John 3 verses 19 to 21. All of this is quoted from the Holy Gospel of John. One must be born on all the planes. What does a poor man or woman filled with theories do when practicing exercises, etc., etc., without having been born in the astral? What good does it do to work with the mind if you still do not have the mental body? The first thing that a human being must do is to engender his internal vehicles, and then he can practice whatever he wants and study whatever he wants. However, we must first create the internal vehicles in order to have the right to incarnate the soul, and later the word. When the legitimate astral is born, we become immortal in the world of twenty-four laws, the lunar world. When the authentic mental is born, we immortalize ourselves in the world of twelve laws, the world of mercury, or of the mind. When the true causal vehicle is born, we acquire immortality in the world of six laws, the causal world, or world of Venus. When we reach these heights, we incarnate our human soul and become true men. Those Christic vehicles are born through sex, it is a sexual matter. As above, so below. If the physical body is born through sex, the superior vehicles are born through sex. Whoever engenders his Christic vehicles incarnates his soul, and then speaks with the word of gold. This is the language of power that man spoke in the ancient land called Arcadia, where children of fire were worshipped. That is the language the entire universe speaks, a divine and terribly powerful language. This was the mysterious language in which the angel of Babylon wrote the terrible, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Upharsan, at the famous banquet of Belshazzar. That same night, the sentence was carried out, Babylon was destroyed, and the king died. A great deal has been said about the universal language, but we can speak it only when we incarnate the soul. Then the kundalini flourishes on our fertile lips, made word. When humanity left paradise as a result of spilling the semen, they forgot the divine language that flows majestically, like a river of gold through the thick jungle of the sun. The roots of all languages correspond to the divine primitive language. Sexual magic is the only path that exists to once again speak the divine language. There is a close relationship between the sexual organs and the creative larynx. In the old mystery schools, initiates were forbidden to tell of the antediluvian catastrophes for fear of evoking them and bringing them into manifestation again. The old hierophants knew there was an intimate relationship between the elements of nature and the word. The book entitled Logos, Mantram, Magic, by the great Gnostic Rosicrucian master, Dr. Arnold Krumheller, is a true jewel of occult wisdom. The great master concludes his book by saying the following, In ancient times, a mystery school existed in which there was a ring, upon which appeared the engraved image of Isis and Serapis, united by a snake. Dr. Krum Heller continues, Here I synthesize everything I have stated in this book. In the eighth lesson of his zodiacal course, Dr. Krum Heller wrote a paragraph that scandalized many know-it-alls. After the master's death, they tried to adulterate this paragraph in their own way each according to their own theories. Now let's transcribe the paragraph exactly as Master Huirakocha wrote it. Let's see, instead of the coitus which reaches orgasm, sweet caresses, amorous phrases and delicate touching should be lavished reflectively, keeping the mind constantly separated from animal sexuality, sustaining the purest spirituality, as if the act were a true religious ceremony. Nevertheless, the man can and should introduce the penis, and keep it inside the feminine sexual organ, to bring upon both a divine sensation, full of joy that can last for hours, withdrawing at the moment the spasm is near, 
to avoid the ejaculation of the semen. In this way, they will have a greater yearning each time to caress each other. This may be repeated as many times as they wish without ever becoming overcome by weariness because, quite the opposite, it is the magic key to daily rejuvenation, keeping the body healthy, and prolonging life, since it is a fountain of health with this constant magnetization. We know that in ordinary magnetism, the magnetizer communicates currents to the subject, and if the former has those forces developed, he can heal the latter. The transmission of magnetic currents is ordinarily done through the hands or through the eyes, but it is necessary to say that there is no greater and more powerful conductor, a thousand times more powerful, a thousand times superior to the rest, than the viral member and the vulva as receptive organs. If many people practice this, they spread force and success in their surroundings for all those who come into commercial or social contact with them. But in the act of sublime divine magnetization to which we are referring, both man and woman reciprocally magnetize each other, being for one another, as a musical instrument which when plucked, gives off or emits prodigious sounds of mysterious and sweet harmonies. The strings of that instrument are spread all over the body, and it is the lips and fingers that make them vibrate provided that the utmost purity presides over the act. This is what makes us magicians in that supreme moment. This is the end of Dr. Kruim Heller's words. This is the path of initiation. One reaches the incarnation of the Word through this path. We may be Rosicrucian, Theosophists, or Spiritualist students. We may practice yoga, and there is no doubt that in all this there are marvelous works and magnificent esoteric practices. But if we do not practice sexual magic, we will not create the Christ astral, the Christ mental, the Christ will. Without sexual magic, we cannot be born again. Practice what you will, study in the school you like most. Pray in the temple that pleases you most but practice sexual magic. Leave the path of perfect matrimony. We are not against any holy religion, nor against any school, order, or sect. All of these sacred institutions are necessary, but we advise you to live the path of perfect matrimony. Perfect matrimony is not opposed to religious life or to the esoteric practices of holy yoga. The Gnostic movement is made up of people from all religions, schools, lodges, sects, orders, etc., etc., Remember, beloved reader, the sacred jewel with its E, A, O, within Ga, E, O is hidden E, A, O, work with E, A, O. The priest, the master of every lodge, the disciple of yoga, everyone, everyone will be able to be born, will be able to preserve their true chastity if they practice sexual magic. Blessed be A, O, blessed be sexual magic. Blessed be perfect matrimony. Within sexual magic we find the synthesis of all the religions, schools, orders, and yogas. Every system of self-realization without sexual magic is incomplete, therefore it is useless. Christ and sexual magic constitute the supreme practical synthesis of all religions.